Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Find Your Finish Line. And I want to thank you, too, for the last three years of being guests on the show and sending me so many comments and listening to the show. I, I received a comment the other day from a gentleman who listened to the Todd Crandall podcast. Todd Crandall had a serious drug and alcohol addiction for years and came out of that. And he, now he's done like 30 or 40 Ironman races, runs a huge a drug and rehab clinic out of Ohio. And he, he was, a, this guest was inspired by listening to Todd. So thank you very much for sending the comments. And I'm glad that uh, we can help some people on their way with the guests we have. So do you know who the most consistent American female in our sport of triathlon has been over the past few years where you're going to be introduced to her in just a second. And I'm so excited to have her on the show. Before I do that, try dot training. You can see the big hat I have on. As you know, I'm the chief motivational officer for try dot. And if you haven't checked out their training programs yet, please do for all you athletes and you coaches coaching with try dot with the likes of Mark Allen and McKeeley Jones and Marinda Carfrey, along with Tim O'Dono, touting that TriDot is saving them time and helping their athletes get to the finish line in a better fashion. Join me every month for the inspiration to find your finish line. She is a multi-time Ironman champion. She's out of Holiday, Utah, and one of the most consistent American females in our sport. Welcome to Find Your Finish Line. Sky Monch, how are you? Thanks, Mike. I'm so good. You almost had me feeling like I was coming down a finish line just then. That's <laughs> very familiar voice and sounds there, so thank you. <laughs> well, you're welcome very much. And you know, just a little side note, I just used to always love to say Holiday, Utah. It just seems like... <laughs> I know it's, you know, Salt Lake and right there, yes. but I don't know, something about Holiday, Utah. And everybody goes, oh, wow, that's that's cool. You live in a place called Holiday. It's just a holiday <laughs> but, over here. But most people don't know how to spell it, do they? Right. It has the A instead of the I for Holiday right. and the right. double L's, I guess. There's a few things. Yeah, I know. I know. That, that's That's fantastic. Well, I always ask, my guests right away. And I know you just got done with the T100 race in Miami sky, but the first question I always ask is what kind of workout did you get in today? Well, today was a lighter day for me. I've had a few recovery days out of T100 and that travel. Um, today I did a two hour bike, uh, inside in my basement. It was a little too cold to venture outside for me. And then, uh, some strength training. So nothing, nothing super crazy, a pretty light day. Pretty light day. Well, some people are out there going, I haven't got a workout in today. I got to get one in because <laughs> Sky got one in. <laughs> hey, if you can fit one in, definitely do. Well, so you live and train in Utah mm -hmm. and so many athletes on the pro side, they go to warmer climbs. They go to warmer climates during the winter time. Do, do you ever do that at all? Where you take a two week block and go someplace so you can yep. get outside and train a lot? That's a good question. I certainly have done that. Um, 2018, well, I would say starting in 2016, uh, I trained with a group and we would go to Arizona or St. George, um, you know, go south in the U.S. 2018, 2019, I spent almost two months, both those winters in Australia. So that was warm. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I've done some stints you know, 10 days, two week stints in Palm Springs, California before in the winter, but mostly, I mean, this winter I've been home the entire time. It would have been nice to get out, but, um, yeah, if it takes a lot to get me to leave home to train these days because I just have everything I need here. And, you know, I'm married, I have a husband, I have a dog, we have a home. Um, so as nice as it is to leave, it's also a lot of work to like pack everything up. Um, Plus I have my training partners here. So I don't particularly enjoy being in Salt Lake for the entire winter, but there's trade-offs, right? There's trade-offs to yeah. going somewhere warmer. Um, and there's, there's that, there's that huge comfort level where you, you're yeah. not thinking about, Oh my God, I forgot my 
this from yeah. the trip and now I got to go buy it. And, you know, simple thing like a bike pump. We forgot bike pump. You know? <laughs> or I just love my kitchen. Like I love having everything I need to cook what I want, to bake what I want, just, just those sorts of things. And while I, I do think there's a lot of value in training camps and um, being in warm weather, I also think there's a lot of value in having everything, all the comforts that you enjoy. So yeah, this year I didn't get away, but and that, I, he, I have. <laughs> you know, it's interesting too, on the last year or two with me going to all the races, the thing that I go, I don't want to pack a bag. I don't want to yes. get on a plane. But when you get there, it's, ah, oh, great. But it's that, it's yes. that, oh my gosh. And then the last few years, I, I kept forgetting stuff. I go, what am I, <laughs> something going on here? It's probably just because, I don't know, I didn't care. I just said, I'll, I'll get there and get something. But the travel and the comfort of home, is, it, it, there's, there's You traveled like a lot. Home. You yeah. traveled a lot more than I have. So Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of travel. I'm sure it, it's yeah, nice it, for you to be home more now. Yes, it is. It, it really is. Although my wife's going, don't you have a trip coming up? Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's been so used to it. Yeah. Oh, and now that I'm going to be announcing Lake Placid for the 25th anniversary, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. But that's only Good. one trip, you know. So. Yeah. So was was Miami was Miami a race for you, Sky, as a as a good test? because obviously the first one of the season, uh, how'd you go into that race looking at it? And now that it's done, how are you looking at it? Yeah. Um, going into it, I would say I was quite nervous because as you know, T100 is a lot shorter than an Ironman. And mm. I consider myself very good at Ironman and not that I consider myself bad at these hundred K distance races, but I just know um, I'm very comfortable with Ironman and the T100 these races challenged me greatly. So I guess my mindset going into it was I felt strong in training and I felt confident in what I was doing um, for the most part. So just trying to relieve pressure and just go give my best and see where I'm at. And, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're all racing first week of March yeah. pretty early. Um, so yeah, just, just going out and trying to enjoy it and give my best and, for sure, getting a race done, you can go back and think of all the ways you messed up and all the ways you can do better on the next one. So I have all those data points and all of the things in my head that I know I want to improve on. So that's and it's not it's not exactly like when you're training for an event like that, that you're getting on a oval track and, yeah. and running laps and loops and and mentally you go, oh, my God, I got four more or five more left to go, you know, <laughs> to, to go. Do you think you'd have done better on a T100 if it was, if it was, you know, out in the countryside or whatever? Um, I think for the bike, it was OK. The loops went by so fast on the bike and mm. there were a lot of corners on the bike lap. They run us through like the middle of the track. So I actually really enjoyed the bike. I thought for sure by the end of well, not even by the end of, but probably by like 15 laps that I would be bored out of my mind. And there were 22 laps and I honestly really enjoyed them all. But the run, I will say the run was seven laps and those were just pure oval. And those were really hard to like, I couldn't see anyone. So I think uh, on the run, I would have, I would have been able to get more out of myself if it was a little more engaging and maybe the laps were a bit shorter, you know, some out and back, some, some ways to see your competitors a bit easier. Um, Anyway, but yeah, probably, yeah. 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 So I would say what, the run was the hardest mentally. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. It just looked like a, it, it just looked like it was a mental tough race, but yeah. that, that, that's just the way it is. Sky, take us back. What was Sky Monch? What was your, what was your first triathlon that you ever did? Okay. The first triathlon I ever did was a reverse mini sprint so i don't even remember the distances but if it's a mini sprint you know it's going to be short it, it's short and, yeah and it was reversed because i i don't remember if it was in the fall or the spring but it was here in utah and it was too cold um and i guess just the location we we swam in a pool so we did that last oh. um and we did that also to stay warm right if you swim last then you're not starting wet um so if that counts that was my first triathlon in 2009 and I had so much fun and I think I, I can't remember what I placed, but I placed well enough to think like, wow, I did pretty good considering I just like hopped on my friend's borrowed bike the night before. So 
that was my first real taste of triathlon. So what 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 kept you in the sport? What what hooked you? Well, you know, I I was already in love with endurance sport. I ran a marathon when I was 16 with a neighbor of mine. Oh, but I, I didn't think, know that. What yeah. how fast you how'd you fast you run? Wow. <laughs> well, it wasn't that fast. I think it was like 4:15. Um, not, nothing wrong with that at 16 no, years old yeah totally i mean but now it's just hilarious what i run off the bike so to me i'm like that was not fast at all um but i guess what i was hooked with was it was just very fun for me it was very fun it was a new community i loved pushing myself and yet yeah, the word i've already said it i i just had so much fun doing it and it mm-hmm. yeah that's it- it was a new and, challenge. You know, it, it's interesting because so many athletes, pros or age groupers, when they do something like triathlon for the first time, a sprint, they they become enamored with the community. They go, these yes. are these are like cool people. I I like to be around these people. You know, you go to a movie or you go to a restaurant and stuff. Who are these people? But but when you go to a triathlon and an event, and you're standing in transition. You go, wow, this is a community. It's you and the. I've I've spoken at the Salt Lake uh, Tri Club and it, oh, yeah. it's just a it's a beautiful community there. Mm-hmm. It, so you're you're ingrained in that heavy duty. <laughs> yes, yeah. Salt Lake Tri Club is a, a great club, big big community there. So, so when you uh, decided, well, maybe I can kind of make a living. You were an accountant. <laughs> uh, when when someone makes a decision on a life what I call a life business change like that. Yes. You've got a secure <laughs> income. Okay. I can make this much money. Yep. If I work harder, I can make more money at my profession. It's what I went to school for. And you, you drop that. W- was that scary? Um, it was a little scary, but because I am an accountant, it was very calculated as well. <laughs> uh, everything was on a spreadsheet. So I knew exactly how much I needed to make every month to cover my costs. And I initially just went part-time at my job. So that, um, you know, I still had some income security. Obviously, mm-hmm. it was a lot less than what I was used to. But um, I was also very responsible financially. So I had a lot saved. Well, I guess a lot is relative. But I had a lot saved for me and Good felt for secure, right? Like I was like, okay, I have savings. I'm still working part time. Um, but yeah, certainly giving that up felt, it felt a little crazy. Like it took me a long time to have the guts to actually do it. Because, yeah, yeah, I'd put all these years into school, getting my CPA license, and then I was almost five years into a career, and I was pretty good at my job, so you you think I would just keep going with it and keep getting those yearly raises um, and promotions and things like that. But I just wasn't satisfied. I needed a new challenge, and triathlon, I just, I always wanted to do more. You know, we we always have people in our lives, even could be family or friends, people we love who say something to you like, why, why are you doing that? Are you crazy? (laughs) Did you have anybody in your life go, Sky, come on now, that's not responsible. Why are you doing it? You know, that said that to you? Um, no one ever said it to me directly, but it, there were a couple of people that said it and it got back to me. Um, people and not in a bad way, but they just didn't understand. They're like, I don't know why she's doing this. Like, this seems crazy, but it's, you can't expect people to understand when you're chasing a crazy dream because only you know how you feel inside and only you know the fire that's burning inside. And I think the one thing people closest to me did know is that I was very responsible. You know, up until that point, I'd financially pretty much been on my own since I'd graduated high school, paid for all my schooling. So financially, I was very responsible. It's not like I was being irresponsible doing this, even though, yes, I was giving up this great paycheck every month. Um, But people also, I think, knew how dedicated and driven and disciplined I was. Mm -hmm. And also knowing, like, if I set my mind to something, first of all, there's no talking me out of it. And second of all, I'm probably going to make it happen one way or another, because I'd already accomplished some pretty big things at that point. So um, not sporting wise, but just life accomplishment. Yeah. And they... They knew who you were, so they realized that if you <laughs> if you made that decision, then you're going to go through with it. That's yes. that's good. Yeah. Let's go back to let's go back to 2019. You know that great win at Ironman Frankfurt. Uh, I've been to that race a couple of times. First off, are those crowds insane or what? Oh, they're the best. I, I mean, honestly, I, that's what makes it. 
I know. It's just it's just insane. But yeah, then you had uh, misfortune of a bike crash. Yeah. And whenever you go through setbacks like that, you know, then all of a sudden your mental game has to be be up there. You know, you can have a few days down and stuff like that. How'd you pull yourself out of that mentally? Like, yeah, uh, I'm going to be crash? okay. Yeah, yeah, after the crash. I mean, obviously, initially, I was devastated because it was two weeks before my Kona debut. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I was in the best shape I'd ever been in. Super excited to go put a result up in Kona. Um, but I think for me, it wasn't... Once I got past the devastation of that, it was actually just like, okay, let's get better. Like all I have to do, it's going to be eight weeks. These bones are going to heal. And then I can get back to swimming and I'm going to go to physical therapy. And then in three months I'll have another surgery. So it just became like, here are all the steps I'm going to take and I'm going to get back to where I was and continue to get better. So yeah, I think I, I think it wasn't as hard as it probably seemed like it should be. Cause to me, it was just yeah. another challenge you know, there was nothing I could do about it at that point. I wasn't going to be able to race. I will admit, I remember sending my coach at the time um, a message once Ironman Arizona was over that year because I wanted to do that race after Kona. So once that race was finally over, I was like, okay, good. I'm I'm done like feeling the FOMO of not being at all the races. <laughs> so that helped a lot to, you know, yeah. have it be off season. And that's when I was doing a lot of my recovery. And then of course COVID hit like not too long after. So then no one was racing. <laughs> yeah. That made it. Yeah. I, you go, okay, nobody's racing. So it's not, but so I bad was now. planning, I was planning to be back and racing Oceanside early April. Mm. Um, so it would have been like six months later after my crash. I, yeah, that year I, I called Ironman New Zealand in oh, yeah. uh, March 4th of 2020 and all the talk around town, because we're in New Zealand, they just yeah. weren't touched by it as much. And people would come up to me, so what do you think about this this pandemic thing? I go, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're kind of what talking about. <laughs> I mean, I know I've heard things, but that's way over in another country. I, you know. Yeah, but true. After I got home from that, it's a different. And then when they canceled Oceanside, I go, oh, my gosh. This is like oh, really, really for real. So I It was know. crazy. It, it, we we're going to talk about it for the rest of our lives, but yes. And then 2022 comes along and I will tell you, you know, and when you won, I think the only time I called you was Iron Man Des Moines. You won oh, Des Moines yeah. in, in 2022. Yeah. Uh, you were second at Arizona, right. And, and France, yeah. uh, Frankfurt, I should say, yeah. but uh, you, you had a heck of a year that year. You, you raced like 10, 11 times. How could you do so much? Um, are you talking about 2022? Yeah. Um, I raced you, you re- four you, Ironmans, so that's yeah. probably why it feels like 10 or 11. Because <laughs> oh. when you do four Ironmans, it probably counts for double. I did four Ironmans, and then I think I did one or two 70.3s, and I did one of the PTO races in Canada. Yeah, um, I did the Canada race, right. Yeah, I think that was it in 2022, so... There may be another one in there I'm missing. At Collins Cup, probably. Um, yeah. But yeah, four Ironmans is a, in a year is a lot. But that was also the year there were two world championships. So mm-hmm. I don't know. For me, one thing I love to do is obviously get really fit for a world championship or, you know, get really fit for an Ironman. And then if I can do another Ironman three weeks later or four weeks, that was how many weeks it was, Des Moines, I think. Like I love to double dip and do two Ironmans because I find I can recover well and just go race again. And it usually, it usually goes pretty well. I mean, I did that again last year too with Kona and then Ironman Florida. So yeah. That that reminds me, (laughs) that reminds me of someone you may have a lot of respect for. Back in the day, Paula Newby Frazier would do that. She'd race. Oh, would she? she, She'd race. She, I, I, I want to say she did three Ironmans in two and a half weeks. Oh it, my it was, gosh. It was a weird deal. And, and, uh, she goes, it's great. I took two days to recover. I went for a few runs, yep. a long bike ride and then went and raced again. I was in the same shape. I'm going, Oh my gosh, who does that? But, uh, it's nice. You gotta yeah. try it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the 2023 win at Ironman Florida with that fast mm. time of eight twenty two. Mm. Uh, setting that American record 
that had to be sweet justice after losing to Heather the year before, wasn't it? Yeah, I lost to Heather the year before on the run, and I lost to Cat Matthews the year before that on the run. So I was pretty hellbent. I'm like, I'm not going to lose on the run again. Um, but I was also feeling very confident in my run. You know, I'd been putting in some really good training, and I felt like I was ready for a good a good showing on the run. Mm -hmm. So I just, yeah, I won it on the run this time, I'm proud to say. <laughs> So yeah, it was that was a really good day. Um, really great way to end the year. You don't always get to end the year on a high, right, so right. that was really great for me. You know, with the merit, with the times coming down at all distances yes. for the men and the women. Do you think two fifty is out of the range of Sky Munch on on a race like that? No, definitely not. Um, I definitely think I can run faster. <clears throat> Florida, I ran two fifty four and. Mm -hmm. Um, prior to that, I'd only run, I think 256 something before that. And then I was over three hours many, many times. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's, you just prove to yourself, you know, when you have a little breakthrough, you're like, okay, I can do that. And then you feel comfortable to push a little harder. So I also think 250 is kind of the bare minimum now to really be competitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many women now. Before running sub three hours was incredible, right? If you could su run sub three, you were an incredible runner off the bike. And now it's like, if you don't run sub three, just forget about even podium, you know? So right. definitely at the world championship level, I think you have to be prepared to run sub 250 or 250 or even sub 250 with the talent that that we have in the sport right now. And just how fast everyone's going. We're all just getting faster. Yeah, it was just, it, it's just collectively you go, oh my gosh, there's four women <laughs> out there and they're all running as fast as I am. That's crazy. But exactly, yeah. That's the way it is. I have to, you know, after that race, I think you were quoted as saying, man, this really sets me up for Nice 2024. Uh, but you made a decision that you said even surprised you uh, that you're, kind of going on with all the PTO races. Is it, that still hold true? Yeah, but I am going to race Nice for sure. Okay, um, good. Yes, definitely. I mean, the problem with this year as an athlete who was offered a contract with T100 and with the Ironman series, which also looked very appealing, you know, competitively and financially, um, I wanted to do it all. Like, I would love to do it all, but that's really... <laughs> difficult to do. Um, that would require, I think, 11 races and three fulls and tons of travel. Mm. So for me, I think I'm kind of trying to get the best of both worlds, right? Like I'm participating, well, not participating, I'm racing T100. And then I'm also going to be able to do a couple Ironman events because I love Ironman events. Um, I love the distance. I love the community. I love all of that. So Nice is definitely high on my priority list. Um, it's a world championship. It's the Ironman distance. And the course there actually really, really excites me. Mm. I love climbing. I love descending. That's what I do here in Salt Lake City all summer long. So yeah, little, I think... yeah up and down little cottonwood and all those. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. my gosh, you've got it right in your backyard. <laughs> I know. It's, it's perfect. I don't have to go anywhere. There's one climb in particular that has crazy hairpin turns. So great descending uh, practice. So yeah, I'm... I'm super excited about Nice, and I guess if if you can put together a, a really solid race and be able to run fast in Nice, then I think that's you'll set yourself up for well, a good result. But but now you've you're juggling because you have to do so many T one hundreds and so many Ironman yeah. events. Uh, have you got that worked out? Yeah, I'm not doing. I'm not planning to do a full Ironman series calendar. Um, I'm just going to race ones that fit and, you know, we'll see where the points work out. If I win in Nice, then maybe I'll have a lot of points, <laughs> but you know, I think, I think you just have to choose one or the other. And like I said, I wanted to do both. I honestly would love to do both. Um, but they were both exciting opportunities and I ultimately had to choose. So, but I get to do some Ironman events still. So I'm yeah. looking forward to what to uh, being there sky what you know when you go day in and day out with the training and sure it can become mundane but you can 
you can have great training partners and yes. good coaches and good support group. But what motivates you? What motivates you to get out of bed in the morning? Huh. Well, some days, I mean, in the middle of a winter, there's not actually a lot that motivates me. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's really difficult some days, but I guess just knowing that um, in the winter, it's like I've got my training partners. We've set a time to swim. I obviously know that I want to keep improving and I want to be competitive. As long as I'm choosing to do this sport professionally, then I want to give my best self to it. And I want to try to be the best at the start line. Um, I really respect the sport and my competitors. And so that's what helps get me out of bed. Um and then, you know, some days in the summer, it's just the pure joy of going and riding my bike that gets yeah. me out of bed, you know, like just the pure joy of en enjoying what I'm doing. Um, yeah, that, that, that will get me out of bed some days too. So it depends you know, on the everybody, day. <laughs> yeah, it always depends on the day, but everybody gets the bike thing because people would ask me, so Riley, what are you going to do? I go, I'm going to ride my bike. And they get, right away, they go, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, like I was going to ride eight hours a day, you know, just to, <laughs> just to fill my time of not going to the events. But everybody gets about the bike just because yeah. you're outside, you're free-flowing, and you're yes. you're actually at play like a little kid. That's really what I, yeah. I go. I go for a ride because I who gets to do that? And I'm it's like a little boy out there going for a yeah. ride. I love it. And you throw I in know. a cafe stop, and then you get some good food. I, know. I mean, it's just the best. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Do you like some days though where you go out and you you train by yourself as opposed to with a, a group of people? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I really only have, I would say, two or three people who I regularly will train mm -hmm. with. Um, and part of that is because arranging schedules can be stressful. And then also, you know, I'm not interested in doing 5 a.m. training sessions with <laughs> with people who have to work all day. So, yeah, yeah. you know, like it has to be other people who have flexible schedules like I do. Um, so, yeah, I, I only have a few people I really train with, but then some days I just go do my own session. It, it totally just depends um, if it makes sense to train with people or I'm also the kind of person who's like, these are my sessions. This is what I'm doing. If you want to join, you're welcome to, <laughs> because I yeah. obviously have a coach and a plan and I want to stick to that. So, yeah. You know, I, I was at a uh, USAT conference God, some years back, and I was listening to the Mark Allen talk. I was in the side of the room, and uh, he was telling all the people, and he goes, you know what? The way you have to train is you really have to hurt yourself so bad on your training sessions so that race day is it's not easy. the effort you think it's going to be. It's yeah. actually easier than your training sessions. Do you look at your training like that where you're going to go out and just absolutely smash yourself because you know that's what's going to happen at a big race? Um, I don't know. Like I, I think training definitely feels hard and I would say training often feels harder than racing. But I think part of that too, is that, you know, when we go to a race, we're fully tapered, especially a big race, right? We're fully tapered. We have yeah. aid stations to support us in training in our not training in the race. Like there's so many things that about racing that make racing easier than training, um, but I, and the fatigue you carry in training can also make training feel a lot harder, but in terms of like smashing myself, I just do what I'm told really. So if my coach says like max effort, then yeah, I'm going to try and give it my absolute max effort that day. But otherwise, like if he's, if he's prescribing me paces or heart rate or Watts, I really do try to keep, I, I try to hit them or be thereabouts. Yeah. I'm not trying to, you know, win the race in training. I, I want to win the race on race day, not in training. So yeah, but I totally get what you're saying, what Mark Allen's saying, like train hard so that racing feels easy. And I do feel that way. Like racing does feel, I feel fit racing, I guess is how I should say it. It's not yeah. like it's easy, but I feel like, oh yeah, I can do this. Um, the other thing, when I was training for uh, running a lot of marathons, I had a, a, a mentor, a coach, he goes, it's all about the 10 mile mark. I go, what are you talking about? We're going 26.2. <laughs> he goes, if you feel fantastic at 10 miles, you're going to be okay. If you don't, it's going to be a long, tough yeah. day because it, it, it's your fitness level at that certain point. Yes. It's just, just amazing. Do you have a, 
Uh, we're talking to Sky Monch out of Holiday, Utah, and uh, she's got a tremendous season coming up with a, a mix of the T100s and Ironmans. Sky, do you have a, a mentor you're able to go to, or you have, have you had one through your life? Um, I wouldn't say I have one specific mentor. I don't know. I'm kind of, I, I guess I kind of like to think through things and just decide things for myself, but I do that's have that, people. That's that, wait, that's that accountant inside of you. I know. <laughs> yeah. <it is. laughs> but I certainly have people who I speak with, right? I mean, obviously I have coaches, I have friends, I have fellow pro athletes who I will, you know, talk to or bounce ideas off. So there's not necessarily one person who's my go-to for all issues either way, but um, just having a community of people who you feel comfortable asking and, you know, like there's different things. It would be better for me to talk to different people about different subjects, you know, depending on their own experiences. And I mean, obviously my husband is probably the one who I talk to the most because he's, Mm -hmm. he's, he's in the whole broader, you know, big picture umbrella, everything in life thing versus like, Hey, do you think I should do this race? (laughs) You know? So we know he's, he's invested in the whole big picture, but yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't necessarily have one mentor. Sky, I have uh, over the years had age groupers come up to me and say, "Uh, Mike, are those, are those pros really that close friends? I I see that, you know, that this one really trains with this one or likes this one. And and I go, yeah, they're as a, as a, a community together. Why do you think that is that, you're close to a lot of other pros because it doesn't always happen in other sports. That's for sure. No, for sure. Um, yeah. And I mean, obviously on race day, we're all competitors and we all want to beat each other. So it's not like, it's not like we're just being all super friendly and letting people beat us. But I think, I think part of it is, you know, this is our community. We put so much into triathlon. There's so much as pros, there's so much we don't do outside of triathlon. So it's, like for me, I consider most of my friends the triathletes who I see at races and, you know, like I'm excited to catch up with them and or my training partners who I may also race sometime. Um, mm-hmm. And I also just think we 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 can all relate. Right. Like we all we're all training hard. We're all sacrificing a lot. We're all, you know, trying to get sponsors. We're all we're all trying to make it here in the sport. And um just, I just think that camaraderie is why we're, we're friendly at the end of the day. And we just respect each other um, and the effort that it requires to do what we do. Yeah. And I see you got the, the feed hat on. I just received my shipment yeah. of, of, I just received my shipment of pill, uh, pillar of performance, the magnesium. I get it from oh, them nice. and, and uh, some bars. So uh, that's a great, that's a great company. That's gotta be a great uh, relationship. Oh yeah. I'm super grateful for the feed. It's literally a dream nutrition sponsor because you can just get everything. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. You're not going to this store to get it in this store to get, you know, I mean, that's or yeah, how we had to do it. Yeah. And being able to just try one bar or one gel and that's what I'll do. I'll order a single packet of something. And then if mm-hmm. I like it, I'm like, all right, I'll get the whole case. So <laughs> yeah. Sky, do you ever think coaching is in your future? Oh, that is a good question. People have asked me to coach them and I have said no oh. <laughs> because Oh, you, so you have not coached anybody at all? I have not coached anybody at all. And part of it is because I'm very focused on my own career. Um, yeah. Part of it is because I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. Like <laughs> I have a coach telling me what to do because I don't think I could uh, put it together. But I don't know. Um, right now, I'm not super interested in coaching like triathlon per se, I think for me, I would maybe enjoy, I think I would enjoy more of like the mentoring or like mental coaching aspect of sport Mm -hmm. instead of like, here's the workout you need to be doing. Um, I guess I just don't feel qualified. I I guess, do you know what I probably don't like is the responsibility of it. I don't want to be responsible for someone not being prepared enough for the race or something like that. So yeah. Or somebody somebody bonks in a race and you go, that's my fault. You know, I, I should have told fault, them. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, never say never, but it's definitely, you know, I'm not, I don't coach anyone right now and I'm not yeah. necessarily working to build up a clientele for coaching. Sky, how do you think 
How do you think our sport is doing overall? I mean, some numbers are up, some numbers are down uh, on the age group side, but yeah. with all the factions out there of the, the clash and the challenge yeah. and the Ironman, how do, how do you think our sport's doing? Well, as a whole, I don't feel like I can answer that question completely because I don't know what the numbers are like for registrations on the age group side. So from like a bottom line perspective, if if the age group registration's down, then maybe the sport's struggling a bit. But from the pro side, I can certainly speak to that. I mean, from the pro side, I think, at least in my experience, since I've been racing pro in 2016 is when I started, like this is the most opportunity I've ever had, the most mm -hmm. financial opportunity, the most even media opportunity, you know, just with... Um, even just with social media and the emphasis that sponsors have on it and wanting to get content. And then you go to these races. I mean, even Ironman in the last couple of years has really stepped up in their focus on the pros and helping us show our personalities a bit more. So I think, I think things are moving in the right direction. Um, whether it's all financially viable, I don't know, <laughs> but um I think for pros right now, there's just so much opportunity. And, you know, some days I wish I was 10 years younger just getting started because there's there's a lot of exciting things in the works, I think. Oh, my gosh. I interviewed Patrick Langa uh, <laughs> four, four days ago. He said the same thing. He yeah. goes, Mike, Mike, it's not good. I, I, I'm 37 and I should be 27, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> said the exact same thing <laughs> i mean i do i try not to let age get in my head i'm 35 um and there's there's women who like i mean ann haug i think she's 41 and she's yeah yeah the best or one of the very best in the world right now so it's not all about that but i think it's more just the number of years and wanting to be able to really take advantage and soak up what triathlon is evolving into for the professionals so yeah. You know, that, that I, I come to thinking about, too, back and forth with you doing the Ironman, the T100, doing the uh, PTO races. That has to set you up for a little bit different type of training. You're training yes. for 140.6, and all of a yeah. sudden you got 100K and go, oh, my gosh, I got to go fast. How do you how can you break that up from one to the other? Like, oh, I'm going to do a 100-mile ride today, or I'm going to do a 50-mile ride today. Is that how it works? Well, no, because... I, right now, my, my Ironman that I'm planning to do this year is Nice. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if there'll be another one, but for sure I know I'm doing Nice, right? So when it comes time to fully focus on the Ironman, then my training will definitely shift to longer runs, longer, longer rides. But for right now, I, I am training less than I do when I train for an Ironman, but the intensity is also up. So like right now I'm fully training T100 distance. Like that's, that's what I'm trying to be the best at. So, mm -hmm. um, but that's if I was of... trying to do it all, then I'd probably be doing that. Right. Like one day it's the three hour run and one day it's the 40 minute run. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, but, but the sky munch of old, I mean, you would, <laughs> if you were doing Kona in October and Nice is, uh, what September, September. Yeah. To me, it wouldn't surprise me. You said, yeah, Mike, I'm doing these in September. I've got to get an Ironman in, in June or July. Yes. I mean, that's, that's how it used to be for you, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I would have done, I for sure would have done one in June or July. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the year goes. <laughs> um, I don't have all the answers. But, you I know. know, I think I, we're all just trying to figure out, like, the best way to do the year. Everyone is in a different situation. Like, I qualified for Nice in Florida, so I don't even have to do an Ironman. Yeah, yeah. But then there's some athletes who still have to validate or qualify um, who are also doing T100. So, anyway, I honestly would love to do an Ironman in the summer. Um, Lake Placid, I'll be there. Come on. I, we I can know. Party Trust together. Me. <laughs> Trust me. There are races on my radar, but I also, I also understand that like, if I want to be my best on for, for Nice, if I want to be my best for Nice, I need to get to Nice not being burnt out. I need to right. get to Nice mentally fresh. And I think with all the opportunities right now, it could be very easy to burn yourself out yeah. before you even get there. So yeah. Well, we, you, you know, you said you don't want to get into coaching or... <laughs> 
<laughs> but but you know you like the mental part of the game. Yeah, Sky, you've been a part of the sport for a while now. What what kind of advice would you give to our age groupers, especially some that are coming into the sport for the first year or two? What kind of advice would you give them? Um, I think the biggest advice, and this is just kind of based off experience in racing and interacting with people post race, is just staying positive. I think it's really easy for people to get annoyed at someone cutting them off or annoyed at this or stuff going wrong. And it just can turn a really, what should be a very positive and exciting day into um, a negative downward, like mental downward spiral. So even though like things are going to go wrong, they go wrong for all of us. Like never is there a race that something doesn't go wrong, even for the person who wins the pro race. Um, So it's just about staying positive and just, Um, making the best of any situation that comes your way and also stay positive on the day-to-day training. Like I get it. It's tough. Some days, some days I don't want to go run in the snow again, Yeah. but as much as you can stay positive, like we're choosing to do this. So, so make the most of it. And I just, yeah, the mental side is just so important. Um, I'm not perfect at it, but it's something that I know matters immensely. So I, I try to catch myself if it's, things are going the it, wrong it, direction. It's really in essence, everything. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, it, I it, agree. It's, it's everything. I've had athletes, you know what it's like. Everybody's lining up, getting into the water for the swim start. Uh, yeah. They're waving on in and uh, some of the looks on their faces. Some people look like, I go, it's okay. It's going to be okay. You're going to have a great day. <laughs> you, sweat, you high five and you loosen them up a little bit, but yeah. you know, the personalities in our sport are kind of wound tight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so you just gotta, you just gotta go with the flow sometimes, but have a great attitude because there's so many things out there that are not in your control. If you control mm-hmm. your attitude, mm-hmm. at least you got that going for you, which is everything. Totally. So that, totally. That's great advice. One of my, my last question on, Find Your Finish Line comes out of the Baja 1000 down Mm. here in Baja, California. A lot of my friends race down there on the the trucks and the cars, and it's just an intense, intense race. I've I've sat second seat on the 1000 one year, and I tell you what, I think Ironman would be uh, 100 times easier. Really? Yeah. (laughs) It's just, it's it's insane. But afterwards, they get together, and they call it table racing. I go, what's that? No, we we sit around the table. We reminisce about the race or another race. Mm. So I call this tri-table racing. So reminisce with us about an event you did. I don't care if it was your first one, last one, whatever, and something that may have happened or funny thing or not so funny. Uh, So tri-table race with us, whatever comes to your mind. Well, you made me think about my first ever Ironman event, actually, um, as an age grouper. Yeah, um, this was in 2015. I did Boise 70.3. And I was hoping to qualify for my pro card there, but then we realized there wasn't a pro race there. But um, yeah, it was my first event. And I just, I don't know, I, I remember looking around at the start line and just counting myself out a bit. I'm like, man, these people all look so fit. And this is crazy. And then I ended up winning the, the entire age group race by 10 minutes. Um, and so that was really fun for me. Like that was a huge shock. I'm like, wow, I'm actually kind of good at this. Um, (laughs) first, first out of state race, you know, and, but one moment I distinctly remember in that race is starting the run and looking at my watch at what I was running. And I was like, wow, I'm running so well. And I don't remember the pace, but I remember I like, uh, positive split the run by probably like 10 minutes <laughs> because wow. it just no not negative split positive split like oh, I you positive. started I'm thinking I started, okay <laughs> no no I started so I was <laughs> I guess the lesson I learned is that like yeah running off the bike at the beginning always feels amazing it's it's the last bit that really counts but somehow I still pulled off the uh the win there so I also remember um that was that was probably my first exposure to all the spectators at Ironman events and the Boise mm-hmm. course. There was just, it was really great for spectators on the run. And um, there was a sign a man was holding and it said, never trust a fart <laughs> on the, on the, on the <laughs> run course. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Like I just hadn't, I just hadn't seen all the funny things anyway. And I think There's- my mom and my, 
now husband they saw that sign too and they were like oh did you see that sign it's so funny anyway yeah it, <laughs> it, it, i've seen so many signs over the years and i always call yeah. them out because some are so creative yes uh, and and in mont Trablant, there was one uh spectator kind of right in front of me i was in the tower and they put the sign up it says tony stark cannot do an iron man you know, Tony Stark from Iron Man movies and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. And I'm thinking, well, Robert Downey Jr. can do whatever he wants. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> they could. <laughs> that, that, you know, I did I did hear in that story a little bit of a, a rookie mistake. What you, you went to Boise thinking you're going to qualify as a pro, and then you'll find out when you get there it's not a pro race? <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I was really a newbie at the, the um, yeah. and I think my coach – at the time, in the past, it had been a pro race because I think there were pro races there before. I'd heard stories yeah. of people riding their bikes in their wetsuits or something like it snowed on race day. Um, but yeah, that year, which I think was the last year of Boise, I think. Um, yeah, we found that out. I was already. Did it, did it start in the evening? Was that the one? No, but it did start late, actually, now that you mention it. I think my start time was like 11 or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Well, that's yeah. a good, that's a good tri table racing story. I love that Thanks. because you know, when you get done with a race like that and you say to yourself, Oh my gosh, I'm kind of yeah. good at this. <laughs> <It's> yeah. just... <laughs> it gave me a lot of confidence. Cause of course I, I was like, man, that would have been perfect. If I could get my pro card, but then I just thought, Oh, well, we'll just go get it at the next. So that's what we did. <laughs> well, Sky, it's always been a pleasure to be at an event you're at. Uh, Thank you're you. a, you're a big part of the sport. We're lucky to have you as part of the sport. And I am so excited to watch you this season to see how it all pans out, you know. Yeah. And But someone like you who I think has a great positive attitude, you know, things are going to be different. But different doesn't mean it's bad. And yeah. I, I think you're going you're gonna to handle that just very well. So thank you Thanks, being Mike. on uh, Find Your Finish Line. How can people find you and see the schedule and, and you know, send you a message, whatever? Yeah, I mean, Instagram is where I'm most active, um, at Sky Monch. Um, and if you really want to send me an email, my website, skymonch.com, has a contact form. So there's that too. But Instagram as well is a great spot. So great. Well, I know uh, hopefully uh, everybody's behind you this season. And thank uh, you. I know I will be. But you take care of yourself. Happy training out there. Thanks. And thank you again for being on Find Your Finish Line. Of course. Thanks, Mike. Everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another edition. Uh, pick us up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Leave us comments, if you would, uh, about the podcast, anything you want to see, any future guests you'd like to see or hear from. Let me know, and I'll try to get them on. So take care of yourselves, and always remember, you're the cause of your own experience. Keep those experiences positive, and you will always find your finish line. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>